What's up everybody, it's George Gabriel and this is part three of the auto load, creating an amazing expandable logic template. Now in part two, I introduced you the environment. This is the area in the back end that we set up our audio and we set up our audio tracks. We also told you which tracks not to delete in the environment. And we also set up our buses and auxiliaries and named them and routed them the proper way. We also saved our session and made sure that we had the sample rate. In part three, we're gonna use another area in our environment to put all of our software instruments. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're gonna get back into Logic and now we're gonna add in our software instruments. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go into Command Zero to get back into that environment. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, this is our audio setup that we had. And we're gonna go in this upper left-hand corner where it says, audio and we're going to go to the MIDI instruments. Now if you recall there was nothing there. We're going to go ahead and right now we're going to just rename this just instruments. And that's going to be preparing us for bringing in our software instruments. So we're going to close this out and we're going to go to track menu and we're going to do new tracks. So now we're going to have to ask ourselves how many software instruments do we want and how many multi timbral instruments do we want. And I'm going to say for the sake of this, let's go 48 software instruments and four multi timbral instruments. So we're going to set this up going back to new tracks and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So as we're in new tracks, we're going to hit software instrument and you'll notice we want these same settings, empty channel strip, uh, no library of course, and it says multi timbral here, but I don't want you to be confused about that because we're going to do multi timbral a different way. As far as the audio outputs are concerned, we're still going to stay with buses. Again, we can change this later, but this is how we want to set it up. I'm going to go ahead and since I want 48 tracks of software instruments and four multi timbral instruments, I'm going to go ahead and type in 52. That's going to give us the number of tracks that we need. And we're going to hit create. And there we go. There they are. Now let's see what that did to the environment. Going back to command zero, and you'll see, hey, nobody's in here in the instrument section. Where do they go? Let's go to the audio and, oh, there they are. They're in the audio section. So, and you can see they're kind of on top of the click and they've pushed this other stuff way out here into no man's land. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to the edit menu and cut these out of the here. And when it gives you this option, you're gonna say delete anyway. And if you're like me, you're going to actually restore the audio section to be what it was because I like things nice. So we'll drag these puppies back. Okay, now let's go to our layer and go to instruments and we're going to paste them back in here. If it gives you this message, say don't replace and we're gonna go ahead and put it in the upper corner here because I like things neat. And now let's go back and look at our timeline. Oh no, no output again. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna want to accommodate for eight software instruments and four multi timbrels in our main screen here. And so I'm gonna delete everything else except for these 12 places. So that'll bring me to 20 tracks. So basically I'm going to just start deleting until I see that 21 disappear. There we go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace these by right clicking on the track, go reassign track, and the first eight software tracks are just gonna simply be instrument one through eight. So let's go ahead and do that. Reassign track, instruments, and then just go one through eight. Okay, we've got our eight tracks in, but these last four are gonna be our multi timbral instruments, and that's gonna start after our 48 software instruments that we want. So what we're gonna do is replace 17 through 20, these no output areas, with instruments 49 through 52. Let's do that. Okay, now we have our front end looking the way we want to have it look for now, but we're gonna go back to the back end and kind of reorganize these tracks. And specifically what we're gonna do is align the first 48 instruments together, and then we're gonna separate out those multi-timbral instruments. So go to command zero to get to that back end here. And what I'm gonna do is, it nicely works out on this laptop that the first 24 are here. I'm gonna go ahead and select the second 24, which will bring me to 48. And what I'll do is I'm gonna drag these down to be underneath the 24. I like things nice and nice. And there we go there. And so then we're gonna go way back out here where we have these last four instruments. And I'm gonna drag them kind of over here for now. Uh, we'll come back to these later. So like we did before, 
what I'm gonna do is I'll select all of these and just take that read automation off. And really, that's all I need to do with these. Now, a word about multi-timbral instruments. What a multi-timbral instrument is, is any software instrument that has the ability to have multiple MIDI channels in one instance of that plugin. Things like Contact, Omnisphere, RMX, those kind of things. And some might have the ability to have eight, some might have the ability to have more MIDI channels. But right now, I'm gonna set them up with eight MIDI channels. So let's go look at that right now and how we're gonna set that up in the environment. So Command Zero will get us back in here. So back in this environment, we have all of these instruments the way we want them. However, these are gonna be our multi timbral instruments. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the first one and then I'm gonna kind of duplicate the rest of them. So I'm gonna just put these three down here. In order to set up the first one, all I'm doing is option clicking this. I'm gonna option click it eight times. That's gonna represent our eight MIDI channels. And once I get that kind of squared away here, and you can see it looks a little sloppy, but I'm gonna clean that up so it looks pretty. And so I'll just select these eight that I just did here. I'll go to the options menu and I'll go clean up please. Align objects. Okay, now the next task we're gonna do is in this left hand corner, you can see there's a bunch of options and it says channel 49, that's where we're starting with. Uh, MIDI import should be all, but the next is MIDI in channel. And for the first one, we're gonna want it to be MIDI channel one. And then we'll click the second one to be MIDI channel two. Again, make sure you're using the MIDI in channel and we'll go all the way to MIDI channel eight. So third one's gonna be three, so on and so forth. Okay, now I have all the MIDI channels assigned. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put 50 underneath my first one here, and I'm gonna put these other two kind of onto the side here. We're gonna get out there, go, go, go. Come on, you could do it. Yes. So I'll put this one up here, and we'll scooch down a little bit and put the other one down here. Now back to instrument 49. We're gonna rename this in the multiple selection in the upper left-hand corner to multi one dash one. And you'll notice when we do that, now it's multi one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, all the way to one eight. And that is our little indication that, hey, this is multi one and this is MIDI channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now to make our life just a tad easier, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two through eight and I'm gonna option click them down here right next to my track 50. Okay, and so where I put these extra ones, we're just gonna select the ones that are still 49 and we're gonna change them to 50. And so they already have the MIDI channel set up, which makes it nice and easy. I will clean this up because I like it clean. And then all I really need to do at this point is rename them. So I already have them all selected. I'm gonna do multi two dash one, and that should rename them all to multi two, one through eight, corresponding to our MIDI channels. We'll go ahead and take, well, if we really wanna be fancy, we can take all of these, and we can just option click them to go this way and just plop them down right here. And we'll clean all these up because they're not pretty. So again, we'll take these are still at 49, and we're gonna go ahead and change these to 51, instrument 51. And then we'll go down here and change these to 52. And then all I really need to do is rename these. So I'll, I'll select the instrument 51, and I will call that multi three dash one, and that will rename these to one through eight in the multi three category. And same with these down below, I'll select them all, go to my multiple selection, this will be multi four dash one. Okay. Last step is to select them all and get rid of that read automation. All right, before I go back into the other screen, I kind of want to look and see what happened here. Um, it appears that when looking at this, somehow it did not do this correctly. So make sure you verify all this, especially for these multi-timbral instruments, because right now the MIDI channel in is not one, the out was two, and now this is correct, this is wrong. So we wanna make sure our outs are all and our ins correspond correctly. So we're just gonna fix this quickly. Again, this is an imperfect environment because they haven't updated it, so they don't really like pay much attention to this anymore. And we just want this to be right. It appears that just the all was the one that went messy here. And the reason why the first channel didn't have this is because we never changed that. So we're gonna go ahead and just change that. Make sure that these are MIDI one. And if you have this scenario where it's turned to MIDI channel out four, you can select all those ones and just turn them all to all 
and that should fix that issue. Okay, so now everything is square. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this window and see what it looks like on the other side. Okay, so we have our software instruments one through eight here. And then we have our multis, one, two, three, and four, all at MIDI channel one. And that means it's set up the way we want to have it set up, which is great. And just verifying back in this area, you can see all of our tracks are still here. So what's gonna happen is once we get to instrument eight, if we wanna go beyond instrument eight, we can pull it through a key command to go to instrument nine, 10, 11, so on and so forth. Also, I'm not gonna do this now, but we can change our buses. On my main auto load, my software instruments are not going to bus one. In fact, I have different parts of audio going to different buses because I have kind of a format of the way that I do my tracks and I have a format of the way that I do my software instruments. But we're not gonna address that right now. Right now, we're just trying to build this up. So I'll go ahead and close this environment. And that concludes the part of adding the software instruments and the multi timbral instruments to our auto load. It's fairly straightforward, fairly simple. We put our software instruments on their own layer in the environment and we set up our multi timbral instruments. And now we are ready to move on to the next video, which is part four. In part four, we're gonna focus on getting the most amount of real estate for our auto load. So we're gonna get rid of some of those garage band elements and make it nice and lean. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to be notified for future videos and leave your comments. I'll see you on part four of the auto load. Until next time, this is George Gabriel Music.